In this video, we're gonna dive into the installation, well, the using process as well for K9S. So K9S allows you to essentially manage Kubernetes clusters and all of the resources in like a CLI style feel, but you know, you can kind of do a whole bunch of different things. So it's really cool. Let's go ahead and dive into it. I think it's an, definitely an easier way to manage all of my Kubernetes clusters. I think you might too. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, first things first, I'm gonna do brew install. And to install it, I'm just gonna open up VS Code here really quick. Let me zoom in a bit and use the terminal in VS Code. And I'm just gonna run brew install. And of course, it's gonna vary based on your operating system. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm using brew. But on Windows, you can use Chocolatey, which is a package manager. Linux, there are a few different options. Then, of course, if you want to build from source, you can as well right here. All right, so this is doing its thing. Let's just go back and then copy the port install commands. Go ahead and we'll run that. I'm going to type in my password here. Oop, actually, all right, maybe we don't have to do that. Let's see. All right, and actually switch terminals here because I deployed a pod and all that, but let's check this out. All right, so I'm gonna type K9S. And we're gonna see Minikube pops up. Now, if you don't have a context in your cube config that's set to the default and up and running right now, you're gonna get an option to be able to choose in your context. But because Minikube right now is set as the current context, this is what's up. And as we can see, I have two pods running. And with this, I can actually just use my arrows here. It's not point and click, but I can use the arrows here and I can, you know, for example, click on one of these pods. And now from here, I have a few different options. So for example, if I type L, I can see all the logs here. And what I can do is if I type one, and I'm just, I'm looking at the commands on the terminal, by the way, that shows the head. If I type zero, that's gonna show the tail, all right? And then I click the escape key and I'm now back. So let's say I want to, for example, go into a shell. I can type S and now I'm in a shell. So a kubectl exec essentially in this pod. I can type LS and we can see I'm in the pod. Now, if I just type exit here, I'm now back. If I just hit escape again, as you can see, there are a bunch of different things that we can do here inside of K9S. I can even, for example, type E and I have the ability to edit my YAML here. Of course, we never want to do this in production. That's just a test. I can type D. It's going to describe my entire pod, just like if I was running a kubectl describe against this. And I could even, for example, CTRL delete. And I have the option to delete a pod. I'll go ahead and I'll delete that. And as we can see, a new one is coming back up because my deployment manifest states and there needs to be two replicas. So K9S is pretty cool. There are a lot of different things that you can do here. And the cool thing is, is you don't have to worry about like remembering all of the kubectl commands. Now, of course, you should know them, especially if you're taking like the CKA or one of the Kubernetes exams or something like that. But if you, I, I guess really what I should say is if you've already mastered or, you know, got pretty close to using the kubectl cli, however you pronounce it, I pronounce it kubectl, K9S is a tool that just makes it a little bit easier. So like, for example, you know, again, instead of typing kubectl, describe deployment, specifying the namespace, I just choose the deployment, click D, and now I'm, you know, in a describe mode. And it's obviously a little bit easier to read from here. So that's how you can get started with K9S. Thank you so much for watching.